All right, thank you all for coming, everybody. Um, Mr. A.O. Scott, or Tony, is the film critic of the New York Times and has been since 2004. He grew up in Northampton, well, actually was born in Northampton, Massachusetts, I'm not sure, he actually grew up there, and studied English, and fortunately thought better of getting a PhD, and now we have him. You might have seen him on TV with Roger Ebert and in many other venues. I can say personally, if I'm looking to see if I should go see a movie or not, I look at two reviews, Tony's and the Roger Ebert site, whoever writes that nowadays. So uh, Tony has no presentation, but he'd be glad to take all your questions and sign your books. And if you want to join us for lunch afterwards, um, feel free. One of us is going to grab a table out there, assuming it doesn't start raining. So without further ado, please welcome Tony Scott. Hi, thank you all for coming. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm, I think I'm good. Um, in the middle of your work days, when you could be playing pool or riding bikes or um, <laughs> whatever it is that you do. Um, but I'm really glad that, that, that you came, and I'm, I'm uh, very excited to have the chance to, to, to talk about um, my new book, uh, Better Living Through Criticism, how to think about art uh, pleasure, beauty, and truth. Um, and one of the main ideas uh, in this book, um, which is broadly speaking about what, not so much what critics do, what professional critics do, as it is about what criticism is, um, is that criticism really is, is, is the conversation that we have about the things that are important to us, about, about the meaning um, and, the, and the value uh, and, and the status of, of of works of art and products of the human imagination. So I would like most of what happens while we're here um, to actually be a conversation. So I, I, I will um, very shortly be uh, taking any questions you have about really anything you want to talk about. Um, there, you know, I'm a movie critic. The Oscar race is happening. There are things to be said about that. There may be reviews of mine that you've read that, um, that you want to thank me for or the opposite. Um, <laughs> Either way, it's, 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 it's all good. I, I'm terrible at movie trivia, so if you ask me a question about a particular movie, um, you, you, will, you will embarrass me, but you can do that um, also. But um, I do want to start talking, start out by talking a little bit about, about the book and how I came to, to write it and what it's, what it's trying to do and why I think um, that the topic of criticism uh, is, is, is worth talking about and, and the idea of criticism um, needs needs defending or needs articulation. Um, now, I, I started writing. Uh, I got I kind of got the idea for this in um, around 2011 when when I found I was I was reading a lot um, of stuff in in newspapers and magazines and online that was that was basically proclaiming um, my own imminent extinction. Um, that because of because of social media, because of, of digital culture, um, because of Facebook and, and Twitter and Google and all of these other, and Amazon um, and Yelp and these wonderful algorithms that were coming into existence, critics, uh, as, as, as they had um, existed for, for a very long time, wouldn't be necessary anymore. And that um, mostly this was, for a lot of people, it seemed like a very good thing because who needed us anyway? And uh, wasn't it nice to, to um, that that all of those those kind of annoying people who were always spoiling everyone else's fun were going to be have to look for real jobs? Um, and there were other people um, who lamented the fact that well, now they're, they're, they're this 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 form of writing and 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 thinking and this way of discerning what is excellent and what is valuable in the world of the arts is going to go away and all we're going to have is just um, people hitting the like button and, and, and um, civilization will collapse. So I was trying to figure out where I stood on this question and, and as often as the case it was somewhere it was kind of a little more complicated than, than, than the, the extremes of opinion would, would, would suggest. But I thought well what is it that, um, that critics do? What is it that, that I do? And, and why might that matter apart from anyone's particular job or professional situation? That is, if, if there were no critics, um, if, if, uh, would there still be criticism? Um, and I thought, well, yeah, there would. Criticism, as I understand it, um, is, is 
is bigger than and more important than um, the particular jobs of, of people like me. So I thought, well, maybe it'd be interesting to try to figure out for myself um, some good answers to these, to these questions. What is criticism? What are critics for? Um, why, what, what, why does any of this uh, matter? And that very quickly led me into to much more difficult and more interesting questions um, having to do with taste, with art, um, with how do we know something is beautiful? What happens to us when we experience um, a movie or, or a, a painting or a book um, or a poem and we find that we're, we're moved by it or we fail to be moved by it? How is it that we can um, simultaneously say, well, there, there's, there's no disputing taste, right? Everybody likes something else. Um, everybody likes what they like, and, and, and there's no point in arguing about it. How do we reconcile that belief, which seems very polite and very tolerant and very civilized, with the fact that we argue about it all the time? You know, that when we, when we leave a movie with our friends, um, we don't necessarily just limit ourselves to saying, well, I, I like that. Um, it's too bad you didn't. We say, you know, what do you mean that was great? That was terrible. And, and we fight about it. And, and, that, and that fight, um, that argument, um, is, is a very important and a very uh, kind of, I began to think, uh, deeply central to who we are as a species. And that, that it lies very close, the impulse to argue, to judge, to evaluate, to interpret, lies very close to the impulse to make to create, um, to, to, to produce works of art and representations of our human experience in the world. So I thought, well, if I could just explain all of that, um, then, then that might be an interesting book. So I, I went and I started doing some research um, and, and trying to figure out who, who might have said some of the things that I would be trying to say um, in, in such a way that I could, that I could, that I could get away with stealing it. Um, and I found, uh, I found my way, as one does, to Oscar Wilde, who's, who's really uh, one of the, the great critical spirits um, in this book. Um, an amazing writer, a polymath, a playwright, a poet, um, an, an essayist, um, a, a, a dandy, an esthete, uh, a critic, the person probably with the, you know, the best and most perfect taste in the, in the history of, of, of human beings. Um, and I found that uh, he had written uh, a, a short book, kind of almost a, a pamphlet, called The Critic as Artist. And it is, uh, it's in, as some of his essays are, um, the other most famous one that's like this is called The, D the Decay of Lying, um, which is also uh, brilliant and important in this, in this book. But The Critic as Artist takes the form of a dialogue between two two Victorian gentlemen of leisure who, who spend the whole night arguing about um, the ancient Greeks and philosophy and painting and music. Uh, one of them is named Gilbert, and he's kind of the critic figure. He's the Oscar Wilde stand-in who has all of these outrageous opinions and, and judgments and says these shocking and provocative things. And the other one, his, his kind of um, straight man or foil, is, uh, is Ernest, which is the great Wildean name for, for someone who is um, perhaps too much in earnest. So right at the end of the dialogue, um, and, and the, one of the epigraphs for this, this book, Ernest kind of sums up what, is, what, what they've been talking about. And he says, you have told me many strange things tonight, Gilbert. You have told me that it is more difficult to talk about a thing than to do it and that to do nothing at all is the most difficult thing in the world. You have told me that all art is immoral, all thought dangerous, that criticism is more creative than creation, and that the highest criticism is that which reveals in the work of art what the artist had not put there. That it is exactly because a man cannot do a thing that he is the proper judge of it, and that the true critic is unfair, insincere, and not rational. And I thought, well, that sounds about right. Um, <laughs> So if I could just, you know, prove that, uh, I, 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 I would, uh, I, I would have made a, a, a successful argument. It was, it, was, it turned out to be harder to prove um, than, than, than I thought. Um, but I did really want to kind of to, to, to get into those questions about, uh, in, in that paradoxical spirit, um, about the relationship between criticism and art that didn't just see criticism as, as parasitic, as, as secondary, um, as negative, um, 
but actually as, as making a, a central contribution um, to the way that, 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 that we think and the way that we, we live. Um, and, and Oscar Wilde was, was very important in, in, this, in this process. Another important inspiration um, on the way to writing this book um, came through, through, through Twitter. It's all right to talk about <laughs> the comp other. Yeah, it's OK. All right, you're all, you're all, you're all cool. You're all friends. Um, I, I never know, you know. Um, you know, because if you go into the New York Times and you just start talking about BuzzFeed or the Washington Post, you know, <laughs> they'll throw you out. So um, I'm glad it's, it's more, it's more open-minded here. Um, but uh, so I wrote a review um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of an obscure um, little movie called The Avengers uh, that, <laughs> I don't know, some of you might have seen it. Um, and it was OK. Uh, and I said it, and the review was OK. Um, there were parts of it that, that I liked and, and some things about it that I didn't like. And I was, I was a little frustrated um, at, at just kind of some of the, 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 the blockbuster cliches that sort of I thought drowned out the, the, the more entertaining, more whimsical, more inventive um, parts of the movie. Um, so uh, I guess the day after the, my review went up, um, I went online. I was looking at, at, at Twitter um, to see if there were you know, any cute dogs that people had taken pictures of. Um, and I saw my Twitter feed was full of angry people um, calling me all kinds of names. And I thought, what, what is going on? Um, and invoking as 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 the, as the authority um, the name of Samuel L. Jackson, Nick Fury himself, Mace Windu, Jules Winfield, all these all these, <laughs> um, uh, and and he had put up a, a a tweet, although he had not tweeted it at me. He had just kind of you know subtweeted me, um, but using my name, where he said, "Avengers fans, we need to find A. O. Scott a new job, one he can <laughs> one he can actually do." Um, and so everyone was like, yeah, you need a new job. Yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, God, what would that be? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I think I might have sent a resume over here, but nothing came of it. Um, but, uh, but it actually got me thinking, um, you know, after we had had our fun little Twitter fight that, that followed from that. And I, I, I wrote something. I can't even remember what I tweeted back, but it, but it must have been very clever. Anyway. Um, <laughs> And uh, but I thought, well, what you know, what is the job? How how do you how do you actually do it? And um, apparently, Samuel Jackson kept thinking about it also because six months later he did a, an interview in, in in the Huffington Post where, um, sort of unprompted, he came back to the to the review and he and 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 kind of spelled out um, everything that was that was wrong with the way I was doing my job, which was um, first of all that I was. Uh, you know, um, kind of tearing down what was what was a perfect film, a wonderful, great movie that I just sort of didn't <laughs> didn't get, um, and that also I was wasting too much time thinking about intellectualizing what was 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 his word a, a a piece of pop culture, you know, just as sort of something that existed for for fun, and 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 why you know why bring so much thought, so much scrutiny, so much skepticism to it, and I thought. Well, that, that's a, a kind of a perfect summary of the problems that people have with critics and, and criticism. On the one hand, here is this beautiful thing that somebody made, um, whether it's a movie or a book or a painting or, or, or a poem. And why do you want to you know, um, mess it up? Why do you want to knock it down? Why do you want to take it apart? Um, why can't you just leave it alone and, and, let, it, and let it be um, the exquisite thing? Uh, that it is, and who the hell are you anyway to come along and say anything about it? Um, and then on the other side, what happens often when you write about popular culture is people say, "Hey, this is just f this is for fun. You know, this is like we want to go to the movies, we want to have a good time, we want to eat some popcorn, we want to watch some action." Um, and why, you know, why why do you have to 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 come in here and 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 um, and ruin that fun by by either by finding fault or by by overanalyzing? Um, and, and I thought the, the, those, those are very serious challenges, and they can't be dismissed. You, you know, it, it, it was, seemed to me worth it to really think about what is the relationship between, between our, our, our pleasures and, and our, our, our you know, search for, for entertainment, um, for meaning, for beauty, for whatever it is that we get out of works of art, popular or, 
or, or fine. And um, the, the, the impulse to, to think about them, to analyze them, to, to, to take them apart and see how they work, to compare them to each other, um, to rank them. Um, and, and my answer, in a way, was, was, was that these things go together, that for me personally, um, the, the thinking about works of art and what they do and how they work um, and enjoying them are, are part of the same impulse, part of the same act. And my other thought is that um, these works of imagination, whether they're big budget movies or, or um, ancient statues or, or, or paintings or poems or pieces of popular music or symphonies um, are, are, are important, are representations of how we as human beings are making sense of our conditions of, of, of life and what it is to be, um, to be human in, in this very strange and, and complicated and ever-changing world. And that um, Taking, taking that seriously is, is, is very important and, 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 and trivializing it seems to me a terrible mistake. So I, I wanted to, to, to write a book that I, I hoped would encourage people um, to, to do that thinking, to take our own experiences seriously, um, to, to, to in, in a situation where we're overwhelmed with um, competing claims on our attention um, of stuff that, we, um, that we're supposed to like. Um, to, 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 to maybe slow down and, and, in, and, and activate our minds um, uh, a little more. Um, there's one other thing that I'd like to read um, before, uh, before taking questions um, and hearing what, what you all have to say. And it is, as I was writing this, this, this book, um, I, I, I kind of did a lot of reading and research looking for um, for, for, for ideas and, and for, for work in, in, in the past that would help me think about these, these issues. And some of it I found you know, um, in the history of philosophy and of criticism. Some of it I found in, in, in Aristotle and in the work of Pauline Kael and Susan Sontag and other contemporary critics. Um, but I found I often would discover some of the most acute and interesting statements of of the problems that I wanted to address in, in, in works of, of literature, in, in novels and in, and in, and in poems. Um, and as I was uh, kind of reading around, um, I found a, a poem by, by the, the English poet um, Philip Larkin, um, who uh, was a wonderful um, mid-century <coughs> poet, who's, who's best known uh, um, poem is, is, is the one called This Be the Bur Verse, um, which begins with the famous line, they fuck you up, your mom and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. Um, you can find the rest of the poem online. It's, it's one of the most concise and depressing statements of, of, of human existence that, uh, that's ever been written. And it's like 12 lines, you know, and afterwards you're just like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, the last lines are, are, not to spoil it, um, get out as quickly as you can and don't have any kids yourself. <laughs> so he was a very cheerful guy. Um, and, but he was also, he was, a, he was a, 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 a huge jazz fan and he wrote a lot of, of really terrific jazz criticism. Um, and he worked most of his life uh, as, a, as a university librarian um, in Hull in Northern England. And he, he wrote a poem uh, in the early 50s, late 40s or early 50s, um, called Reasons for Attendance. And it was the poem that, for me, kind of really crystallized a lot of what I wanted to, to, to say and to understand about criticism. And to set it up a little bit, um, it, it, the scene of the poem is, is the, 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 the speaker, um, this guy who, who might be Larkin is, is, is walking down the street and he passes a dance hall. Um, he hears music coming from, from inside. He, he, he doesn't go inside. He's kind of looking through the glass and seeing the people in there dancing and, uh, and listening to the music and reflecting on the difference between what's going on inside, between the fun that the people are having in there um, and his own his own experience of it, his own reaction to the music um, from outside. So here's, here's, here's the poem. Um, it's called Reasons for Attendance. The trumpet's voice, loud and authoritative, draws me a moment to the lighted glass to watch the dancers. 
all under 25, shifting intently, face to flushed face, solemnly on the beat of happiness. Or so I fancy, sensing the smoke and the sweat, the wonderful feel of girls, why be out here? But why then be in there? Sex, yes, but what is sex? Surely to think the lion's share of happiness is found by couples? Sheer inaccuracy, as far as I'm concerned. What calls me is that lifted, rough-tongued bell, art, if you like, whose individual sound insists I, too, am individual. It speaks, I hear. Others may hear as well, but not for me, nor I for them. And so with happiness. Therefore, I stay outside, believing this, and they mull to and fro, believing that, and both are satisfied, if no one has misjudged himself or lied. So that's um, that poem. Kind of, <laughs> it's a complicated poem. For me, it kind of says it says it all uh, about how our own experience is sometimes divided um, between between pleasure um, and and something else, um, reflection, thought, um, and how it is that 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 art satisfies both of those both of those impulses, both of those desires, and also. Um, leaves us often in, 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 in a state of, uh, of confusion. And it's in that confusion, I think, that, that, that criticism um, can really begin. Um, but now I'd like to, to hear what you have to say and, uh, and take your questions. Um, so yeah. Hi, thank you for that very thought-provoking um, introduction. Sure. Uh, several, many years ago, when I went to a movie, and I, uh, it, talking about your uh, Avengers review, I started this movie and I hated, absolutely hated it, when all of a sudden it dawned on me, this, this is a comic book. Right. And then I settled down and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So this preconceived idea, I came in with the preconceived idea, or maybe no idea, just before this meeting, I, my daughter texted me from college saying she's just read The Darling by Anton Chekhov. Mm -hmm. So I quickly looked up a summary of it to have a conversation with her. She yelled at me, said, don't look up a summary, you gotta read the, the actual book. So I agreed with her, but my question is, what about this idea that we come to a work of art with preconceived ideas, yes. with expectations, with what we've heard, or do we come to it with a completely open mind? I mean, that I, you can't not come to something without. Right. So, but you have to, I, I, it's, it's a question that comes up a lot, and, and it certainly comes up a lot in, you know, when you're a critic, because in, in a, uh, you, you can't help um, having preconceptions, prejudices, being, being who you are. I mean, there, 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 is no, um, there is no view from nowhere or, 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 or a view from 50,000 feet, certainly in criticism, certainly when you're talking about, about um, works of art and movies and things that you either enjoy or, or, or you don't. There, there's not um, an objective uh, measure of these things. But I think it is possible. Um, I know it's possible, and 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 I, I it's something that I try to encourage to, um, to exactly what you described to to because you can it's not that you get rid of all, everything that you believe or everyone every, every everything you are when when you walk in, but you can also open yourself up. I think it is it is possible um, to 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 let go of some of those prejudices to just as you described to say well this is something else this is not you know this is not necessarily what I what I thought um, but also in a way you can become someone else you can you can put yourself in 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 the position that 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 isn't quite um, uh, you know that's different from from who you are in uh, in everyday life I mean I, I think one of the things that that art does that's so remarkable movies especially is provide um, just th this this enormous imaginative palette that you can project yourself onto. So you can sit there watching a movie. You can be whoever you want. You don't have to be the person in the movie who's like you, whatever that would mean. Um, you you can. No one is stopping you. Nothing is stopping you from extending your empathy or your identification in any way that that. Um, that you want it to go, and I think sometimes people are afraid of that, you know. And sometimes people say, "Well, this is like I, I like this, you know. I'm a guy. I like guy movies. I don't like, you know, girl movies um, or, or or whatever. Or, or you know, I I just like action movies. I don't like romance movies. Or you know, I only like movies with subtitles, um, movies that move really slowly, where the camera just stares at one thing for for you know for for a, for a whole take." Um, and and everybody smokes, um, but 
and I love those moods. But um, but it is possible and 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 desirable, and I think in a way learnable to um, to move outside of that. To say, I mean, and and, and one thing that I think. Um, you know, now in, in the age of data that we live in, we can er very easily be classified and categorized um, according to different algorithms. So it's like, you, you know, you like this, you might also like that. People who bought this also bought that. And you're being kind of tracked into, it's like, oh, I'm a person who likes this. I'm a person who bought that. Um, but it's one of the things that, that I, I'm, I'm trying to get out of this book and saying that a kind of a properly critical spirit can do is, is um, give you a chance to jump the tracks and, 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 and go somewhere else and find something else, which you may, not, you may not like. You may come running back to your comfort zone, but, but you, had, you had the adventure and, 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 and maybe learn something. Yeah. Hi. Um, so hey. when I think of criticism, <clears throat> it's kind of a very personal matter because I always have these thoughts on my opinions. But I was wondering, for someone whose criticism, I guess, could be read by millions, is there a difference in your criticism? Like, do you consider the audience when you're publishing versus maybe just when you're watching something personally? Um, there's there's less of a of a distance in a way. I mean, I, I think if 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 I thought when I sat down to write about about the audience and about the institution that I was writing for, I think I might just be paralyzed. You know, if I if I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I have to this I have to write about this for the New York Times. Um, and, 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 and so I think much more about, well, how am I going to figure out what I want to say? You know, how, how am I going to work out my own thoughts? For me, writing is very much about um, clarifying and figuring out. I don't, I don't really know what I think until, until I've gotten to the end of, uh, of the writing process. And it's like, OK, now um, I, I, it, 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 it kind of makes sense to me. So, so when I sit down to write, I'm doing that. I'm thinking about. Um, about myself, I'm thinking about maybe um, a, a you know a small group of, of friends and family who who um, who I want to impress um, or shock, um, and then and then the other millions of people or whoever they are um, will will uh, will will follow. I mean, I, I am aware that I'm doing it in public, you know that it, that it and and that I, I have to do it um, with a certain degree of of, uh, of craft and discipline, and that I only have so many words, and there are some words that I'm not allowed to use. <laughs> um, but, but in general, as, as, as close as I can get to that own personal experience, to, to, to turning that into an argument, to articulating what happened to me when I was seeing that movie in a way that could make sense to other people, um, the, the, the better it is, the more, the more authentic it is, the more, the more useful I think it is. Yeah. How about those white Oscars? <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, don't even get me started. Uh, well, you're all aware of the, of the, of, of, of the issue. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I think you know, a lot of people are going to watch the show just to see what, um, what happens, um, just to see how, uh, how far um, Chris Rock can go and, 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 and whether he will. Uh, in a way, be able to 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 redeem anything, but I, I think there's a it's a big problem not just with the Oscars, obviously. I mean, I think that um, there is narrowly a problem with uh, with the Academy, with with um, that that is that is structural that has to do with 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 who who is voting and how they're voting, um, and also with how they think about movies. The the Academy is six thousand people. Um, Kind of the, the, the elite of, of of the of the of the movie business of, of, of Hollywood and their and their job is is really to project an idea of, of prestige to, to, to give um, the world a picture of um, of the most respectable um, most high minded uh, most artistic and scientific um, face of, of of Hollywood and their ideas about what constitutes Prestige are very, I think, very narrow and very kind of out of date and, and out of touch. So that there are, and it's not just a matter of of, of race, although it, it it has a lot to do with the the current racial controversy. But which is that um, things that have too much to do with with 
popular culture that that or or that don't that stray from that kind of narrow idea of respectability and seriousness are invisible to the academy. So, for example, I mean, comedies are a great example. We, in the last 15 years, there have been amazing comedies. Some of the some of the um, the most in inventive. Uh, Work in 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 movies have have been um, comedies, um, but you know you're 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 not going to see, for example, Melissa McCarthy getting an Oscar nomination for for Best Actress in Spy. Um, it's kind of just unthinkable. But that's a great performance. I'm sorry, that's an amazing movie performance. Um, and uh, um, similarly, um, while the Academy is open to movies about the black experience or with African American characters, those movies have to be kind of s sanctified by suffering, you know, um, or by a kind of nobility, or by ha being about social problems. You know, they they have to they have to kind of um, satisfy a kind of an old fashioned um, Hollywood liberal guess who's coming to dinner kind of idea about about racial um, progress. So a movie about Ray Charles will win Oscars. A movie about NWA um, will not get nominated. Um, a movie like Creed, you know, I, I think a remarkable piece of filmmaking with a terrific performance, um, lead performance uh, in it, um, in, in a way won't, won't, will be invisible to the Academy because it, it's, um, it's such a, uh, in addition to being a terrific boxing movie, is, is a kind of a very low key and observant. Um, and sensitive look just at the realities of African American life in America, but that's not about um, you know uh, drug dealers. It's not about. I mean, it's 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 just a very um, straightforward movie about the humanity of its characters, which is something that 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 the Academy kind of um, can't see. And I think there's a bigger problem. Um, I mean, I could go on and on about this, so I'll try I'll try to keep it short, but. But of course, the bigger problem um, is the industry itself. I mean, the, the, the academy is, is, is one target, and I think an entirely legitimate target um, for the protest that's going on. But of course, the real, the real target and the real point of this, of this protest is um, the, the, the abysmal state of things in the film industry itself, not only on matters of race, but gender too. You know, 4% of, of, uh, of, of studio and studio subsidiary released movies are, are directed by women. Um, and there's a whole system in place of, of, of how the deals get made and how the, the, the pictures get greenlit um, that, that excludes, um, excludes people of color, excludes women, excludes, excludes all different kinds of, 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 of stories and different kinds of, of, of talent. Um, and right now, television is doing much better. One of the reasons also that television seems so much more creatively vibrant sometimes than movies is, is because it is more open um, to these stories and to these storytellers. So there is a, this is, this is, this is, I can't say it's the beginning, but this is a stage in a, in a, in a much longer and I think um, more difficult um, process that will that will will have to um, and I think will uh, uh, depend on some some real change at, at in in the executive suites and in the kind of the the, the mindset um, of 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 the industry it, itself, um, which is which is compared to a lot of other high profile industries in this country, shockingly undiverse, shockingly behind the times, shockingly. Retrograde in in the in the ways that it, it allows kind of um, unspoken prejudices and, and and habits of discrimination to continue. So that's that's the short answer. <laughs> yeah. um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about your process. So like the physical process of how you watch these movies, mm -hmm. and also your mental process of since your criticism is so public. Does that change your mindset versus just watching a movie, mm -hmm. you know, for pleasure, like with your family? Um, I mean, the, the 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 process is that the the a, a list of um, a list of movies comes comes out, you know, of of, of re coming releases, um, like three or four weeks ahead of time. I mean, it changes. It's it's always a little bit um, volatile. Things drop <coughs> off the schedule, or or there are late things that, that pop onto it. Um, my uh, um, my co-chief critic and I, Manola Dargis, we, we take turns um, picking our, um, this by the way is, is an answer to the question that I'm asked most often. Um, in fact, almost every time I've ever given a talk, people want to know like, how do you decide who reviews what movie? So I'm answering that question now, even though no one 
<laughs> no one has asked it yet. Um, so we take turns picking, you know, kind of cherry picking what, what looks most interesting to us. Um, and also making sure that there's some balance as, as, as far as the works of, of major directors. So if, you know, I did Inside Lou and Davis, she did Hail Caesar, or I'll do the next Coen Brothers movie. Um, and, and making sure that at very busy times of year um, that, that the big movies are more or less equally divided and that, and that we, you know, um, one of us isn't like dominating the, the, the front of the section or the top of the, of the homepage. Um, and then we assign the rest out to, to other staff critics and to, and to freelancers. Um, so the, the, the movies screen, um, I, I always watch them uh, projected on a screen in a, in a screening room. Um, never uh, at least once. I mean, there are sometimes movies that I will have seen much earlier at, at festivals or, or, or because um, there were early screenings that if I go back and watch them again, I'll watch them off a DVD or off a, off a link. But, um, but every time, at least, you know, at least once, um, un unless it's completely impossible, unless it's such a small release that, there's, that, there's no, that they can't book the screening room. Um, so I'll see it. Uh, and I'll try to see it in a way as cold as I can because of, of, of what you were saying, to, 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 to have as few preconceptions as I can. I mean, obviously, um, that's, that's not really possible. Um, and, and as I go along and, and, and see more and more and more movies, um, I will have you know, um, opinions already about, about work, previous films by the director or about the actors and so on. But even still, I, I try to sort of walk into the, um, to the theater having read as little as I possibly can get away with reading and, and having tuned out you know, whatever my colleagues have been, have been saying. So I can sit down and, and have the experience. And, and, and um, often I only see it once, so I have to pay extra close attention and, and, and take notes. And then I kind of leave figuring, and, and then it's, I try to figure out what else do I have to do. You know, it's, it's not always the same every time, but sometimes this was based on a book. Well, I, I think I'd like to read the book. Um, most of the time, I like to read the book. Um, are there other movies like this one that I've missed? Is there are there earlier films by this director that I that I should catch up with? Or is, so just whatever it is. If, if, if this is a movie about um, you know about a real person or an episode in history, do I need to do some some research to find out about that? And and that. I'll do that, and that's partly just also a way of procrastinating and feeling like I'm working, because um, and, and putting off writing. Because I better, you know, better check that Wikipedia entry one more time. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I kind of the the the, the writing process is um, is is fairly concentrated and 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 in, intensive. I mean, as everyone who works for a daily newspaper does, I've learned how, when necessary, to write very quickly. You know, sometimes. The deadline is on Wednesday. The screening is Tuesday night. You know, I have to get up in the morning and and you know um, drink my coffee and 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 produce the copy in you know in in, in ninety minutes or, or something. And I can I can do that. I don't. That's not my favorite, but um, but you learn to do that. And uh, I sort of sit down and I, I mean I figure out what I'm going to say. And I always I always have to have the 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 lead first. Like I can't start writing until I know how it's going to begin. And I, I do write in a fairly linear way, um, and then sometimes go back and move things around. But it, but it does somehow have to go in sequence. I have to see the see the argument and, and see how I'm going to get where I'm going to start and how I'm going to get um, to the end, and and have a, a chance in a way to surprise myself along the way. Um, and I guess the, to, to to the other question, the the, the difference between. Um, it's not really a different experience of going to the movies. I mean, I think I, I always had the kind of critic part of my brain um, going long before I was a critic um, professionally. You know, it was just kind of part of what I liked about going to the movies was was that sort of like thinking and and, and reflecting. But but not to have the obligation to write about it is a great is a great freedom because that's that's what's really hard. Like thinking is fun. Um, writing writing is hard, and it's it it was it was fun, you know, to go with my wife to see The Martian and like you know enjoy The Martian and not have to like think about what I you know not have to think about how to put in writing in you know twelve hundred words um, without spoiling anything what you know what I what I thought of it. So uh, there's this uh, thing that Roger Ebert said once that has stuck with me uh, when it comes to criticism, and it was something like. Uh, 
your, your intellect may get confused, but your emotions will never lead you astray. And yeah. you've alluded to this, um, you know, this distance between right. that first initial emotional reaction that you get, maybe coming straight out of the movie theater, and later, uh, you know, trying to figure out, thinking about it, and figuring out maybe why do I have that reaction, yeah. intellectualizing it a bit, and. and uh, so my question is, you know, how do you how do you balance those two things? Uh, because on the one extreme, you have you know just the uh, kind of the clicking the like button sort of right. purely emotional right. reaction, and then on the other hand, you have that uh, in if you intellectualize too much, you run the risk of getting really abstract and people don't understand right. what you're trying to say. And and I think you also do risk b betraying something of your own of your own feeling. I mean, I. I um, I disagree a little with what Roger um, said there because I think that your emotions can lead you astray, and that and that um, movies are are such an emotionally powerful and sometimes emotionally overpowering experience. Um, they can they can manipulate you. Um, they can they can you know in, induce strong feelings in you that they might not deserve or they might not be doing for good reasons. So I mean there there are plenty of movies or not just movies. I mean there there are television commercials that can make you kind of choke up and and, and feel you know. Um, Sentimental, and and there are there are there are techniques for 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 evoking all kinds of things that'll 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 make you feel that way, and 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 so it's you can't you shouldn't always necessarily trust that. I mean, you you should um, perhaps approach that perhaps with a little bit of of skepticism, but you can't at the same time let go of it entirely. I mean, I do think that 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 feeling is very important, um, and that and that it's the thing in a way um, that. You're the most sure of, um, which doesn't mean that 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 you always go with it 100 percent. But the 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 information that you have um, about a given movie that you absolutely know is how it made you feel. Like you don't you weren't there when it was being made. I mean, movies are very hard to decode in a way. You can you can certainly um, you know um, understand the, the 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 techniques and 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 break them down and think about you know the shots and the cuts and the music and the performances. You can um, analyze them. You can find out you know what kind of lenses were used um, and 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 how many takes you know that that scene took. But um, but you don't necessarily know any of that, and you might never get to the bottom of what was actually happening or certainly what the intentions of of the people involved. Um, were and usually the immediate uh, in, intentions were to finish the damn thing. Um, so what? So what you know? Um, a, a thing that that uh, that Gene Siskel used to used to say a lot. You know, is like the question is, what do you know for sure? What do you know for sure? And 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 you ask yourself about about a movie and, and what you know for sure is 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 how it how it made you feel. Um, which again doesn't mean that it's just the expression of that feeling is enough to make it criticism. I guess this is where the where the thought and the and the um, and the intellect and the more cerebral part of it comes in. Is just saying I felt something isn't isn't criticism because it's not necessarily useful to anybody else. If you just say I like that, I cried, that sucked, that was hilarious. You're not you're not doing any work with it, um, and you're not in a way giving anyone any anyone else anything to to, to think about. So it's it's somehow. The conversion of that experience and of those emotions into something um, that is that is that is that is transitive. That's part of part of a, a discourse that you can have that you can talk about. Um, that 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 I think is is what what criticism is 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 good for. It's sort of a similar lines that we've been talking to. Um, when you think about the artist's intent or the filmmaker's intent versus the work itself, how much do you how much do you consider the intent of the of the filmmakers? In your reaction to it, does it matter? Or does it not matter? I, th I think it matters. I mean, I, I I do sort of think that you know um, what Oscar Wilde or his 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 guy um, is saying is sort of true. That that you know sometimes you're putting stuff in there that the artist didn't. But I mean, you can't you can't necessarily know the artist's intentions, um, and and you actually can't always even ask. You know, sometimes it, it can be very frustrating if you're doing an interview with a with a with a filmmaker and and you you know and and you say, well, what you know, what were you doing? What were you trying to say? And they'll say, well, I was trying. You know, I was hoping that that we had enough light for me to get that shot, or I was thinking, you know. <laughs> um, 
I, I was thinking, you know, that I, I, I was just so impatient with the actor who had, who had you know, flubbed the line 50 times. Um, but I think you do want to figure out, in, in a broader sense, what is this trying to do? I, I, think, I think you shouldn't judge things according to just um, completely arbitrary or irrelevant standards. You know, you have to figure out, well, what is this movie? Um, what's it trying to do? What's it trying to say? What are its intentions? And how well does it succeed um, in, in fulfilling those? Um, that's, that's a step in criticism. I don't think that's the whole thing. Um, I think there are other terms that things deserve to be judged in. But they need to be understood, at least, um, in their own terms. I, I, I think that um, the work, thinking about just the work itself and, and kind of what it is um, apart from those intentions is, is very important. And I think it's also important to think, and, and where I kind of often finally end up when people ask, like, well, what, what side do you see yourself? You know, do, do I see myself as, as, as kind of um, interpreting the work of artists or, 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 or in a kind of alliance or sympathy with, with artists? Um, or with the audience, I, I'm, I think of myself as on the side of the, of, of the audience. You know, I'm, I'm talking finally um, to the people who are, gonna, who are gonna consume this, who are gonna see this, who are gonna think about it. Um, and that's who I am too. Um, and you know, to, to, to the extent that I, can, that I can think about what the artist might be doing, that, that, that could be useful, but that's not the main, that's not the main thing. Um, and in a way, it goes back to the to the to the earlier question, my earlier answer to it. What what do I know for sure? What can what can I speak speak on with some with some authority and some confidence? It's not what the artist was thinking in the end, right? Because I don't I don't know. It's what it's 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 what I saw, what I thought I saw, and 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 how I felt about it. Who do you want to win Best Picture? Who do I want to win Best Picture? Yeah, not who will win. Not who, who will win. Who do I want? You know, I, I um, oh, Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> Very controversial. That's the one I haven't seen. All right. Well, you should. It's good. Well, thank you all. This was a lot of fun. Thanks.